Hey guys, welcome to the Hunter's Quest podcast. This is your host, Hunter McWaters. Great to be with you. Today, I have a pretty cool and unique uh, guest. My guest is a three-time Super Bowl player, I guess you would say, a uh, one-time Super Bowl champion, and he was the leading receiver uh, for his team in two of those three Super Bowls. Um, a guy who you may or may not have heard his name. He's not a really flashy guy, but just kind of a blue-collar, hardworking guy who had a really great 11-year NFL career, like I said, including that one Super Bowl championship. And um, someone who I really admired because I was a huge fan of his team when they won the Super Bowl. And I actually have a signed copy of Sports Illustrated that he's on the cover of, which if you're watching on YouTube, you can see right now. Pretty cool story. I talk about it in the episode when I was a kid. I emailed him this copy of Sports Illustrated and he sent it back to me signed. And the other day I saw his name pop up. Uh, starting to follow me on Instagram. And I was like, what? So I looked into it. It was him. And um, it's a really cool episode this week with Joe Jerevicious. And the team he was on when he won the Super Bowl was, that would be Super Bowl 37 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And um, anyway, he talks a lot about uh, kind of going through adversity and different trials and stuff in his life and how uh, he was sort of depressed after football ended, but how hunting really filled the void in his life and um, gave him kind of a new mission and purpose in life. So um, really cool episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, as always, I want to say thank you to my partners, Seekins Precision, Barnes Bullets, Onyx Hunt, Loophole Optics, Mountain Ops. Um, and, um, that's, that's it for now, but I just want to say thank you to those guys. Um, you know, if you don't have Onyx yet, or you want to get some great products from mountain ops, use the code quest over there. Uh, you can also check out in the, um, description field of this podcast, some other places where you can use the code quest and save. So thank you guys for your support. I ask as always, um, I know, but it's just really helpful Please, probably the number one thing you could do for me right now, if I could ask you for one thing, would just be to go to YouTube, search my name, Hunter McWaters, and follow my, or I'm sorry, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is The Hunter's Quest with Hunter McWaters. Um, I really, really need to build that audience there. So if I could ask you to do one thing for me, please just go to YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I got tons of great content. Every week I have a new podcast rolling out. I have hunt films on there. I have several hunt films on there already. More are coming. I have some how-to videos, gear reviews, gear dumps, um, and, and more stuff there. So tons of content there to check out. And it's very helpful if you can hit that subscribe button and it doesn't cost you a penny. Um, if you've already done that, please go ahead and leave me a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts. That's also very helpful. And of course... Anytime you can share the podcast on your social media, send it to friends and family, all this stuff is very helpful. And again, you know, I don't like beating dead horse here, but I am working really hard to put out content for you guys. And I've been putting out this podcast every week for three years now. Uh, I think I've missed two, maybe three weeks in three years. Um, and, you know, it's all 100% free most of the hunt films I've ever done, you can go ahead and watch on YouTube right now for free. Um, so, you know, if, if you like what I'm doing at all, if you want to support me at all, you can do something for me, which takes a few seconds and takes $0. And that's just go subscribe to my YouTube channel and go, um, you know, leave me a rating and review, follow me on Instagram, all that stuff, share the podcast, share with friends and family. Um, and of course, you know, if you want to get some products, you want to sign up for Onyx, you want to get some mountain ops, um, you want to get some Heather's choice meals, use my code quest and I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, um, hope you guys enjoy this episode. Looking forward to sharing it with you and I hope you guys have a great day and God bless. See you in the next one. All right, guys, welcome to the Hunter's Quest podcast. This is your host, Hunter McWaters, and today I'm excited to get to talk to a guy that um, I remember watching play football when I was a kid. I used to be a huge Buccaneers fan, um, so this is pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Joe Jervicious, how you doing, sir? I don't know, I'm doing fine, brother. It's uh, <laughs> kind of cool to be honest. I haven't done one of these for, I guess, a long, long time. Usually yeah. just interviews, but never on a podcast, so it's kind of cool. 
Yeah, man. It would be cool to talk and maybe dig into some stuff you hadn't really talked about. Obviously, I want to hit on football a little bit, but um, love to you know get into some other stuff as well. But um, I do want to give folks a little bit, and you, a little bit of backstory. It's kind of cool because, like I said, the – you know, when, I, when I, I grew up in Virginia, but before that, we lived in Tampa when I was like very young. So um, that was the last like pro town we lived in. And so I was a huge Buccaneers fan. Um, and especially like when I got into like high school, I really got into football. And um, that was when you guys were like crushing it with like you and, you know, Brad Johnson, Mike Allstott. You know, you had the killer defense like Derek Brooks and Simeon Rice and um, all those guys, you know, um, you know, and you were playing, obviously, receiver, I guess. And Keyshawn Johnson was there. Keenan McCardell. I could go on. But I remember just being super into you guys. Um, and so and actually, you guys, this is kind of a side story, but um that team, you guys actually inspired me to – I actually changed high schools my junior year because my high school didn't have a football team, and I wanted to play football because I knew, like, you know, I'm never going to play, like, college or, you know, pro or anything. My only chance to actually play football is going to be high school. So I actually moved schools to to go play high school, and that team, which you were on, was a part of that. So thank you. Yeah, glad <laughs> to see I could help with it. Obviously, I love the game, but – it's kind of funny. And, um, you know, I sit here on social media, like, you know, no different than anybody, but the things I follow are always hunting, fishing related, yeah. some sports stuff, obviously. Uh, and I just happened to, uh, I love looking at pictures. I love hearing stories and we'll talk about some of this later, but, um, it's kind of funny. I get that message from you asking if it was me. Yeah. <laughs> you sent the picture of the sports illustrator that I was on after Super Bowl 37. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was just kind of funny. And it's funny how this this world, right, for as big as it is, it's crazy how small it is and just kind of how many, how many, you know, what's that, the, 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 how many degrees of separation kind of thing, yeah. like just kind of all intertwined somehow. Yeah, and man. I thought it was a crazy story. So when you asked me to come on the podcast, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, talk, so I'll talk about that really quick. So, yeah, I was just scrolling through my Instagram and I saw – like uh, a notification, um, Joe Jarevicious started following you. And I was like, what? No way. That's the same guy. And I was like, um, but I was like, there's not that many guys named Joe Jarevicious. Like I've never seen anybody else with that last name. So I, I looked one your... uncle. Okay. <laughs> so I looked on there and I was like, man, this looks like it's actually him. And I saw like pictures of you and Allstott and I was like, okay. And I Googled it and I was like, I think that's actually you. So I, I yeah, I messaged you. But going back, that – which you mentioned that I sent you. So I got to give my audience a little context here. Um, back in the day, I don't know how old people are listening, but back in the day, you could go on the internet and order these like databases of NFL players, home addresses. And they cost like 200 bucks or something. And it was like a hobby people had where you could send guys stuff in the mail with like a return, you know, a nice letter and a return address. And usually especially the nicer guys like yourself would <laughs> sign it and send it back. And, um, I honestly only did it one time and it was you, <laughs> but you were on the cover. Like I said, I was a huge bucks fan. You guys won the super bowl. If you're on YouTube, go, go right now and look, Joe was on, you were actually on there twice, but, um, wow. but this one, right after you guys won, it's you stiff arming a Raiders player. And I sent it to you. And here it is, and you signed it and sent it back to me. And I've kept it all these years. So I thought that was super cool. And then I was like, that dude followed me on Instagram. i got to get him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. That Sports <laughs> Illustrated has so many kind of funny things that happen. At that time, and you probably know this because you were in Tampa during the time, but my wife and I, we had our first child with Michael. And he was sick during that time. And uh, we just came back from the Super Bowl. I flew back from uh, from San Diego and my mother-in-law stayed behind with my wife at the hospital and Michael at that time while we were battling, you know, and trying to figure out what was happening. But anyway, um, we got back. I flew back in, went right to the hospital. Two days later, we have our Super Bowl parade. And it was the first time that my wife and my mother-in-law got to kind of leave the hospital for a couple of days. But move another day forward, my mother-in-law is heading back to the Pacific Northwest. And uh, it's kind of funny because 
we just dropped her off at the airport and uh she's like uh, uh the phone rings 15 minutes later and i thought maybe she left something in the car and she's like joe are you on the cover of sports illustrated i said sue i no not on the cover of sports illustrated and sue <laughs> was a big ball bus like she liked to play jokes and stuff like that so anyway she's like joe i'm looking at you on the cover of sports illustrated and I started laughing and I'm like, Sue, no, you're not. No, I'm not. So anyway, <laughs> she kept telling me I was. So I have a buddy that lived in New York City who was a big kind of big timer for the WB network. And I call him up and he's like, Joe, I'm in a meeting. I said, I don't care. I said, because he's a huge Sports Illustrated guy. Yeah. So go on the Sports Illustrated website and tell me what you see. So he's like, are you serious? I'm like, I am. So I can hear him punching the keys. And all of a sudden, he just starts dropping f bombs on the on the <laughs> his meeting because he's like, "You're on the cover of Sports Illustrated." Yeah, and that's kind of how I found out I was on it. So that's so uh, cool, man. Pretty cool story. Yeah, and you're <clears throat> and you're a pretty humble guy, so you probably won't say this. So like, <clears throat> you know, you might you're not like one of those dudes that like, and no offense, has like a huge like recognizable name maybe but like you were the leading scorer for people who don't know you were the leading no sorry you're the leading receiver in that super bowl for the tampa bay bucks and i think you were also the leading receiver when you went to the uh, and you've played in three super bowls yeah i believe you were the leading receiver uh for the seahawks when you went with them as well correct yeah you know i I attribute all that back to uh i'm more comfortable being kind of the blue collar guy Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we rented a house here in Lincoln, uh, which is where I'm staying here for another year with my wife and my youngest daughter. Uh, I'm in a warehouse I rented right here. So I have a business back home in Cleveland, Ohio, but I came from, um, basically warehousemen. Uh, one grandfather worked on the railroad and the coal car. The other one made drill bits for a living. And the rest Mm -hmm. of my uncles pretty much drove tow motors. Uh, so I kind of relish being that just do my job you know there's yeah. people that know who i am and you know a buddy of mine called me he was at the browns game yesterday in cleveland and you know he said dude it's crazy how many people still have your jersey so again <laughs> it just i like flying under the radar uh, yeah you know I'm sure we're going to talk about some hunting stuff here eventually Oh, for sure i love um uh, i just like being a guy that get the job done and i like hanging out with just kind of normal people i don't like all the flash um and yeah. that's just kind of how I, my, my career lasted for the 11 years it did. I just kind of got my ass kicked in for a living, tried to hold on to the football. <laughs> uh, once in a while, I was able to give a hit. And now, um, you know, now I'm just kind of an old guy. And, you know, I get flattered when somebody does recognize me. But, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I relish the blue collar stock. Yeah, man. Um, and when you said that, actually reminded me, I had two jerseys. I had Allstar and I had your jersey. Um yeah. And you were playing on a team with kind of flashy, you know, like Keyshawn Johnson was a pretty, pretty flashy dude. And I'm sure he's a great guy. Just like, um, yeah. but yeah. So anyway, um, and you, I was just watching on YouTube, like that one, um, like crazy catch. I can't remember who you guys were playing, but like you like popped it up in the air and then like caught yeah, it in the really, end zone. <laughs> yeah. Really. It was kind of funny too. And if you listen to that podcast or not the podcast, but, uh, the game, they actually, my daughter, Caroline, uh, my first daughter wasn't born yet. And they, you know, they actually say in there, you tipped it up like a volleyball player. And a year later, we oh. have a girl that's, you know, we have our daughter and here we go. Uh, we're in Nebraska yeah. right now. And I, as I told you before we got on here, I'm, I'm deep into the volleyball world. So, uh, yeah, yeah I was against Philly and I enjoy it. You know, I'm going to leave for, uh, I'm heading to Tampa tomorrow morning. Uh, to get ready for final four week with the with the girls and uh so i'll fly down a couple days early to hang out with mike allstott and oh nice coach gruden and todd yoder and rich clemens some front office people so uh brad johnson uh allstott uh, john howell who was a safety um we, we're still a pretty close crew and i think that once you win a world championship you just kind of that doesn't go away so we're pretty yeah close group of guys we all follow each other's kids we get together once a year and i gotta start exercising here or dieting or just cleaning up my <laughs> system because i'm about to see all stop and <laughs> he's half nuts oh man so are any of those um guys that you still hang out with they are any of those guys into hunting as well yeah so actually john howell uh is a buddy coincidentally who is from mullen nebraska he's from the sand hills here uh oh nice and john's uh john grew up on a forty two thousand. it was bigger at one time but it's now a forty two thousand acre ranch in the sand hills in nebraska so when i retired from football 
um, I was kind of battling depression and I had a really hard time seeing green grass, football fields. I wasn't mm. watching football. Uh, and it was hard to kind of go to civilian life. Uh, I went to, you know, it's not that I, it's not the ego, but my, my world was so structured, everything from yeah. my diet to my lifting, there were no days off, you know, I was just always disciplined. And then uh, it wasn't the fact that it was just the fact I couldn't walk out of a tunnel one more time. That was really hard for me to, to grasp that, mm. you know, it's like, okay, now this is the next chapter of my life. And mm. uh, so anyway, uh, John was one of my best friends and uh, he invited me out to the ranch and I spent two seasons there, two kind of falls uh, helping him guide. My wife was great, knew I needed to get out, but he's got mule deer on there and white tailed deer and bobcats and coyotes and, uh buffalo uh you know the property is so big he has a private herd of buffalo so wow that's really where i started to learn a lot about the hunting about hunting to be honest with you i mean john yeah. was a, a great teacher for me and that was back in 2023 after the super bowl uh it's when john's relationship and my relationship is you know buddies and pretty much brothers now uh, flourish, but I actually got into hunting and this is kind of crazy. I actually was playing with the giants my first four years after getting drafted out of Penn state. Um, I was hunting in New Jersey with, uh, Kerry Collins, who was my quarterback. Okay. And, uh, I remember he's like, why don't you come over to the house? And, you know, he lived on about a 10 acre property outside of New York city where hunting was allowed bow hunting. And it was my first time crawling my big rear end up into a tree and the tree stands back then were about this wide and this tall, you know, and here I am six, five, you know, 15, 20 foot up in the tree and shaking. Cause I'm afraid I'm going to fall out of the tree. <laughs> but I remember the six point buck coming underneath my tree. Uh, and it was young, you know, all these years later, I know it was a, about a year and a half old, a little mm -hmm. six point, And I started shaking. I yeah. started shaking like I yeah. got buck fever and I was I didn't even have a bow in my hand I was just up there trying to see what it was all about okay I literally left Carrie's place I drove to the sporting goods store in Ramapo New Jersey I bought camo and a book uh and honest to God from that day forward until the present day even last night there's not one day that's gone by since then that I have not read or watched something hunting related wow yeah, uh, there's not. I haven't. Wow. I haven't missed a day in my since that ever happened. Like <laughs> How many years day, ago was that? That was probably 1998, 1999. Okay. Wow. So, every so hunting day. was really like a big thing for you, kind of moving out of the football kind of phase of your life, huh? Yeah. So the reason uh, there's so many things that happen, right? It's like kids get older, and you know, I have a company back home. I'm in. I own laundry mats and a commercial laundry business back home in Cleveland. And my best friend from high school, uh, you know, he understands that I kind of I get to do some other things just because of my prior life. But I come into this warehouse, and um, every morning, five o'clock, I work out. I go back home, I shower, and then I come back here and I do some numbers, and you know, we we talk business and uh but the reason i had left ohio uh wasn't actually for one it was to give my youngest daughter a better opportunity to the demise of my oldest daughter who was like you're seriously moving to lincoln nebraska where i'm going to college <laughs> I'm like i i swear to god i want nothing i don't want to know i don't want to hear just go do what you need to do but um uh, i just noticed it uh when I went out to Seattle for the first time and my in-laws have a place up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and just oh, being nice. from Ohio and making your way into those mountains, uh, it gets you. So I knew uh, from a, a long, long time ago, actually getting married to my wife, that moving west was one, one of the things that I would do. But um, I'm kind of this guy that when you think about life in general, I like... I don't want to be so just football focused. Like that was a part of my life. Right. And it was a yeah. huge part of my life. It gave me the greatest head start in life. And it, I got to fulfill a childhood dream of playing football. But uh, this hunting thing for me um, is kind of taken over because I think it's, it's new challenges. And yeah. you know, I listen to your podcast. I follow your website. I follow the guys from Elk Hunter, you know, uh, 
uh, how to stay in shape and, you know, just to see what guys are doing. Oh, elk it, shape. Really, Dan. Elk shape. Yeah. Elk yeah shape. He's a buddy of mine. I've been on yeah, hunts with so, him before. Yeah. I follow, you know, I'll follow those guys, uh, mountain op just to kind of see what nutrition stuff people are doing. But yeah, it's just kind of this thing. Like it excites me to know what's over the next mountain. Yeah. You know, and I have a growing up in Ohio, all I did was fish for walleye, steelhead and perch, but I never hunted. Nobody hunted. Hmm. So I kind of fell into this thing and now I love it. You know, I, I sit here during the winter time and, uh, kind of work on traps and get ready to do some trapping, uh, you know, uh, just studying, putting in for different tags. Uh, I had mm-hmm. a farm in Iowa that I owned for about eight years and I never farmed in my life. I grew up, like I told you, I grew up at warehouse, <laughs> but next thing, you know, I got a Kinsey planter, a couple tractors, I'm planting corn and beans and a little boom sprayer and, <laughs> nice. you know, just planning some stuff obviously for the deer uh but also just to make a little side cash to pay the the note on the property but uh, i get jealous when i see guys going you know on these hunts into montana idaho all these different places uh because i'm jealous because i don't have those that, that group of friends other than john john's actually leaving today uh coincidentally to go hunt blacktail and uh, uh sea duck in alaska oh so nice is he going to kodiak yeah, he's going to Kodiak for it. So, nice. um, so it's just kind of crazy. So through it, I've got to see so many different places from Alaska. I was in Africa for a couple of weeks once hunting planes game. Um, and it wasn't really for me. I kind of like the more, as we talked about earlier, the blue collar element of hunting. Like mm-hmm. I like more, I want it to be cold. I like campfires and I like yeah, elements. Yeah like elements probably why i like the game of football so much up north is you know you got all these elements and you got to persevere so um yeah it football or i'm sorry hunting has just kind of opened up this thing that i think is going to give me life as i get older you know I'm, i'll be 49 here next week and um uh, yeah oh yeah december just, 23rd i saw that on wikipedia yeah, I'm a 23rd guy. i'm a christmas baby so yeah my son's on december 22nd yeah a buddy of mine then so yeah it's just kind of crazy so it's more this hunting thing has just become it teaches me it makes me happy and i notice that my heart rate goes down and some of the places Mm. that you get to see uh and that i'm going to see you know once we really finalize this move out west and you and i become buddies and you invite me (laughs) on some of your hunting trips and i get to carry your stuff no problem but that's what i'm interested (laughs) in learning that's ultimately what uh that's ultimately what makes me happy that's cool man yeah, so a bunch of stuff there. I wanted to, yeah, I got to say, um, so for me, I grew up whitetail hunting too. And um, first I got to say, you're like, I've done a lot of hunting kind of in a short amount of time all over kind of the West and stuff. But that feeling you felt when that first six point walked out, man, like there's, I've never experienced anything quite like the adrenaline dump of saying oh. a being a tree stand and a deer's like in bow range like it, it's yeah. like wild i think uh you know it's funny because that mem- i can remember i could tell you exactly where i'm sitting i could tell you where the wind was hitting me i mean i could tell you everything yeah. about it. and then you know i bet you could tell me everything you have every rack you have behind me or the racks i have behind me i could tell you where i was what the temp was i could tell you what you're wearing or what i was wearing um it's crazy what it does to you and i think you know what it's given me is there's a challenge right you know mm-hmm. all of us hunters know that you just don't walk out in the backyard and you know boom there's a there's a buck right there's a lot of studying that goes into it um you know i love the conservation aspect of it i you know i i can't wait to move out west and volunteer on some stuff mm-hmm. you know all this things all these the mountain um, rocky mountain elk foundation mule deer foundation safari yeah. Club international stone sheep or the wild sheep foundation i belong to and i've never hunted sheep before in my life but i just i love i love like i said it's like i'm gonna do it but i love volunteering to do it but yeah, yeah. those feelings of you know getting ready the night before can't sleep travel driving <laughs> god knows how many hours to get somewhere uh, you know and then you know after i've shot a few animals then it's just kind of that next phase of learning the butcher and face cave yeah. and i love doing all that stuff so uh my wife graduated from princeton you know she's a smart girl okay smart woman. and uh i asked her a couple of times she's laughed when she's pulled in the house and you know i might have some geese i'm cleaning or 
<laughs> so a white tail I'm skinning out and she's like I said do you ever think you'd marry this when you graduated from Princeton she's like no <laughs> yeah <laughs> jock and hunter yeah so uh, it's kind of cool though yeah man so I'm I'm kind of the same way so like I said I grew up hunting but um, when I found like western hunting uh, and like mountain hunting it was just like a whole new it was like learning to hunt all over again it was like a whole new challenge new set of things to learn like um you know, just home with different skill set. You got to like with the backpacking and the gear and it's just a totally different game. Um, have you done much of that yet? Or are you still looking to kind of do more of that kind of stuff? I've done some, I've been out to Utah, uh, elk hunting, uh, again, in terms of like kind of roughing it, my, my biggest roughing experiences are probably in Alaska. Mm-hmm. I've been out four times, British Columbia actually, and Alaska. Um, trying to brown bear hunt forever it took me four times to finally to oh, shoot wow. a, a decent bear and you know i spent tons of money and tons of time but uh it's hard to explain to somebody that what do you mean you went four times it took you four times to, to shoot a bear again it shows you how hard it is yeah and once it's in you like every single time i came back was there disappointment like sure right i mean that's but Every time I came back empty handed, including any other hunt I've ever been on or that I've done, I'd rather do it than not do it. Yeah. For you know, sure, I think you see so many things, you learn so many things, you know, how many people can say that, you know, you look to your left and there's the Pacific ocean. And then you look to the right and there's the Bering sea because of where I was on the Aleutian islands in Alaska. Oh, that's awesome. You know what, what I mean? island were you on? So I was in cold Bay, Alaska. So okay. all the way, way at the very, very tip. And again, it's like I said, it's uh you know, it's the Aleutian Islands right there, and you could see the Pacific there and the the, the Bering Sea over there, and um, it's just wild taking float planes, um, you know, looking for goats and horseback and you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'm no different than any of the guys that you're friends with or listen to you or that you and I both follow. Like, I'm a gear junkie. I probably have more <laughs> stuff than I need, but you know, if it's the latest and greatest, I probably got to try to have it. <laughs> um, but I like learning. There's just so much. I like listening to you guys on, on these podcasts, guys that get out there and do it. Um, just because again, I love learning it. And I told yeah. you, I really think it's no different than when I was prepping for football. Um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you have to be, I have to know what's going to, what, what I'm doing. I got to know what my teammates are doing because if I don't, you know, somebody can get hurt. Yeah, You know, that's the game of football. I run the wrong route and somebody tees off on my teammate and snaps their neck and they got a wife and kid, man, I'm responsible for that. So, um, you know, I think learning as much as I can and just, you know, Onyx, I mean, how about Onyx right now? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, it kind of gives you the, you can be as, you don't have to know anything other than how to turn your phone on <laughs> and follow the dot. Like you oh, can yeah. kind of navigate yourself back to wherever. I mean, it's just kind of crazy where it's all gone. But um, again, that kind of stuff just excites me. And I love not knowing everything. I don't know anything to be honest. I mean, I know enough, but right, I just I like you learning from people. You know, mm-hmm. I've met um, just last week, I was looking, I needed some trapping supplies. So I'm like, I can order off a F and T post, but I said, maybe there's an old timer here. Well, lo and behold, I found an old timer here who literally looked like he could be a cousin of Jeremiah Johnson. <laughs> and here I am in this guy's trapper shed here in Nebraska. And he's writing, he's kind of bound to a chair. He's out of the game right now. It's, but he started trapping in 59 and there's this old guy, you know, uh, he's, I think if I'm guessing he was 78, 79. And he spent the time to just kind of tell me, uh, what he's done and what to look for. And, um, you know, so I kept that stuff. I put in the folder, grabbed a few things from him, and, you know, I'll never forget that because if I do trap a Bobcat this winter, um, you know, he's, he's part of that story. So that's kind of what I love about the hunting world. Absolutely, man. That's, that's so cool. Uh, There's so much you can learn from the old timers and that's really cool. And when you can do that, um, but yeah, man, um, Alaska is, is uh is something else man so my first like quote unquote western hunting trip like backpacking hunt trip was in alaska and that like kind of changed my life man there's just something about alaska do you have any plans to go back anytime soon or anything like that 
Yeah, so I've been putting in for tags uh, with worldwide trophies and trying to accumulate points and, you know, nice. doing all that stuff. And, you know, there's this point where, sure, I love, you know, I'd love to shoot a 400 inch elk or a couple hundred, 200 inch plus mule deer. But, you know, sometimes I'm just as happy shooting a doe for some meat. For sure. Right. But uh, there is a part of me, like, especially on the elk, to bow hunt as giant of an elk that I could potentially find uh, <laughs> is kind of a dream. So okay, uh, mule deer, you know, going out West and seeing mule deer, like, you know, we've seen big bucks back in Ohio, uh, yeah. you know, Nebraska's got some good deer. Uh, my farm was in Iowa. Like, you know, we had really good deer, but it's something about being out West and seeing a mule deer. Yes. They're a like different animal, man. It's just a different breed. And, yeah. you know, you look at them and it's just like, oh my God. And when you do see something that's 180 or you can tell there's something out there that's 200 inches plus, mm-hmm. you start looking at the Arizona strip and you start like, where, how do I can, how can I grab some of these points over here? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I just, again, I just want that chance. So again, I'm not really too tied up on, on scores. Yeah. But, you know, it would be kind of cool one day, whether it happens or not. I don't, I don't know, but um, like the Alaska trip uh, I'd love to, I think this next, at least while I have legs underneath me and I'm mm-hmm. still in pretty decent shape. Uh, I really, I, I'd, I'd love to shoot a doll sheep and obviously yeah. everybody would love to shoot a bighorn. And I'm just as happy seeing a bighorn on the side of a mountain during the summer. Mm-hmm. uh not hunting them just they're they're unbelievable but uh i've been to alaska four times hunting and one time the very first time i was playing with the seahawks and there was a kid that was a, a fan of mine but he was in hospice and his mm-hmm. family asked if i would be willing to come out there and visit him so i flew to anchorage and oh wow uh, i spent some couple days with the kid and then actually the day that i got back home to seattle uh he had passed away but you know it's just kind of crazy, you know, because he wanted to meet me, I got to go out there. And that's kind of like you, when you said you went out there, it just kind of opened your eyes. Mm -hmm. I remember he took me to the Seahawks backers bar in Anchorage. He wanted to get lunch and, you know, he he wanted to leave the house. So he wanted to show me where everybody watched the Seahawks. And I remember parking in this parking lot and driving across or walking across this little expansion bridge and the number of salmon that were just between oh, the park yeah. and the sport bra or sport bar, sport bra, uh, <laughs> the sport bar were, it's just unbelievable. And yeah. I was hooked. Oh, so, yeah. you know, I'm sure you've maybe seen like uh, Buck Bowden, Mike Bowden, who's been on, uh, you know, he's obviously a pretty popular guy now because Stephen Ranella has been mm-hmm. out there with him. But um, I got to hunt with Mike and, you know, Mike's about as, jeremiah johnson as it got for me I mean, here's a guy that brought out i think it was 29 horses on us on a string out to his place built his place from the with just a kind of a couple saws and built wow. it by hand and you know i went out there and got to do the snowmobiling into the back country and chase grizzlies and you know it was slow but it's just it's hard to explain like what you get to see when you get off the beaten path yeah yeah alaska is different man it's like it just it just has this feeling of just wild and like I don't know in the low of forty eight there are some really wild places but for the most part even on pretty big tracks of public land you know like if you walk far enough you're gonna hit a road or a town or something out there it's like no wow. you you can just walk until your your head falls off and you're not gonna see anything uh, uh, this uh, this trip I did for this bear that I finally shot a few years ago in Cold Bay. Um, I remember uh, one of the funniest stories, uh, you know, like I, like I said, I'd like to think I'm a pretty tough dude, but yeah. there's little things. So I'm in my tent and it's whipping, it's whipping this, this night. And, you know, you're in bear country. And when you grow up in Cleveland, Ohio, and you live in Cleveland, you know, you're not really worried about brown bears coming in to get you, but, right. you know, you got your gun next to you, the guides in his tent next door to you. And uh, the wind's whipping that day. And I was on my cot, but, because I'm 250 pounds, you know, my cot's kind of just an inch or two off the ground. And anyway, these field moles were trying to get underneath the tent to just stay out of the wind and rain. And yeah. my back was so low that I felt something scrape across the bottom of my back, like a massage. And I remember jumping up and grabbing my gun and I was half asleep. 
just like you know here you are a big tough guy yeah oh yeah a little little field mole got a hold of me scared Dude, the heck out of me so I, uh, i'm the same way man i've been in my tent a bunch of times and just like mice are scurrying around and you would think there's a like grizzly outside my tent like i'm so freaked out or like a werewolf or something uh, definitely no, been there those are the stories <laughs> that make you laugh right yeah. One time I was spring bear hunting and I was in a floorless shelter and I kept thinking I heard something weird. And when I woke up, I looked next to me and there was like a pile of dirt right next to my face. And I was like, what oh. the heck? And I looked over and like a ground squirrel had like burrowed a nest like in the dirt right next to my head. <laughs> we, you know, I was in Kodiak uh, prior to that, um, again, bear hunting, but um one of the coolest stories that happened to me. So I have my little cabin that was literally uh, right on the water. And one day I was having a little sip of uh, coffee before we were going to get ready on the skiff and head out and start glassing. And I was only about 10 foot away and uh, from the water's edge. And I remember I just kind of had my head down, taking a sip and I heard this noise. <sighs> And I picked my head up, and just as I picked my head up, I saw this spray. Hmm. Oh. And it was gray whales. Whoa. Coming in. And it was crazy because it was so close to me. And all of a sudden, there was a horn that went off. I could hear this kind of horn in the distance. And all these boats started to come into our bay, and all these spotter planes started to fly hmm. above, and the herring season had opened up. Oh. Interesting. So they were flying around. These spotter planes were telling these trolleys, these boats, where to drop their nets. Hmm. And there were, uh, you know, I would imagine game and fish planes up there, but it was crazy. It was like this big dance going on in the sky and the same thing on, in, in the bay. And um, uh, it was just crazy to see. And it probably went on for about an hour, hour and a half. And when game and fish said that enough herring had probably been caught, they hit a horn again and these planes disappeared and all these boats disappeared out and that wow. was it and went uh, bear hunting. So it's kind of stuff like that. that's just, you know, you don't really think about, right? Experiences. Yeah. yeah but I got to see that and, you know, the, the closest I've ever come to a whale is when I went to SeaWorld, you know, and <laughs> yeah. here you are in the wild and there's one literally, you know, I, I 15 feet from me. Yeah. They're that's kind of, crazy. So. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool, man. Like, it's it's interesting that, like, you came from a career in football, which is kind of like, I would say, like, in some ways, a, um, I don't know how you'd say, like a microcosm or, like, it attracts kind of, like, the warrior kind of personality, you know, I would say. Um, oh. Obviously, it's not, like, real war, but... Um, but then, you know, and a lot of times I feel similarly, like, when I'm out on, like, a backcountry hunt... Um, again, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to compare myself to uh, an actual warrior, but, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of similarities there. Uh, you know, the rucking, the, you know, the knowledge of weapon systems, the, you know, glassing, hiking, camping, all that stuff. But that's really cool how like, um, that was able to kind of fill that, that kind of need inside of you, that kind of, you know whatever whether it's like your personality or like your archetype as a man um that that hunting was able to kind of fill that void for you um but i know you've like dealt with adversity uh, in other ways too like in your career and your personal life like you know you alluded to earlier i know you guys unfortunately lost a child at one point and um also i know um you had an injury and kind of was a, like a a whole ordeal with multiple surgeries and stuff like that, that kind of um, probably ended your career maybe before you would have liked. Um, so I'm just kind of interested, like how, you know, personally you were able to draw strength and kind of get through some of that stuff. Was there anything that kind of helped you out through those times? Yeah. I mean, I, I that's a great question, but I don't think I'm, immune to it right like i'm the only person that this has happened to you know i think this goes on on daily and i've always just had this mindset that um you know stuff happens right and yeah it wasn't the greatest way to start off uh you know being a parent by losing a kid three months later right my staff infection yeah you're 100 percent right that uh, I wanted to try to get to lucky number 13 in football and I just the infection ravaged my knee and 
that was all uh, all she wrote. Uh, a couple years ago, I was held at gunpoint by I got robbed uh, oh, yeah. in my barn back in Ohio. Uh, I was held for 30 minutes and I battled PTSD pretty bad. Um, and even to the point that, uh, you know, a little fun fact about me, like I love our military. Like yeah. I love, like all caps, love our military. And yeah. uh, if I've ever had one thing that I wish I did kind of coulda, woulda, shoulda, I wish I would, I wish there's a part of me that wishes I was in the military because I love where we live, you know, to be able to do a podcast, to be able to hunt, to be able to fish. But ever since I owned my first house, uh, I've always owned uh, an American flag. And I probably have a collection of 15, 16 American flags that are just kind of uh, all beat up from the wind and faded. And, and you know, I know I can take them to the, the Veterans Club and they could, you know, take care of them properly. But I've just put them away in a box. Yeah. I figured that one day when I become a grandpa, hopefully a long time from now, but <laughs> it might be cool gifts to put out or give the grandkids to put out on 4th of July kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, going back to the adversity, um, you know, that robbery really affected me. Mm -hmm. uh, like it affected me because it was the closest I'd ever been to dying. And maybe the staph infection, if it kept going, maybe that would have happened. I don't know. But um, I just kind of, I got to a point that was pretty dark, uh, yeah. like really dark. Uh, you know, I'm glad I'm still here dark, like if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just it was the closest I'd ever been. And so anyway, uh, going back to the whole military thing, um, I've always done some things with Wounded Warrior, supported every year. Um, and then there's uh, uh, Jay Glazer, who's on NFL Fox, had started this thing, MVP, Merging Vets and Players. Hmm. So it was literally kind of taking, you know, our warriors, right, our, our soldiers, men and women that have been through combat and are dealing with PTSD and they're super disciplined. That's how their life rolls. And then you have, you know, athletes. And listen, in order to make it at the pro level, no matter if you're the best or you're the worst, there's still an amount of discipline to come. So Jay put together this thing where, you know, guys deal with depression and, you know, you've got PTSD over there. And so I joined this group uh, with MVP just to listen and, you know, dealing with adversity. Uh, I realized that, you know, I'm not the only one that had PTSD. You know, mm -hmm. I know that I'm not the only parent that's ever lost a kid. Uh, you know, when I would do charity stuff back in Cleveland or in Tampa and it was Christmas time when I would buy gifts for kids, you know, some of the organizations would want a camera to be there and I, would, I, I wouldn't do it then. I, I'm not doing it because I want to be on TV. Yeah. I'm doing it because I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, so I just have always had this way of saying like, you know, yeah, it stinks, but there's some other people out there that are dealing with this thing right now. You know, yeah. there's somebody's losing a kid today. Somebody's kid has cancer. You know, there's a woman out there that's a mother or uh, a grandma that's got breast cancer. So uh, it's just a world we happen to live in. You know, nobody's immune to it. But I think sports has taught me, you know, to kind of pick my ass up, right? quit feeling sorry for yourself because uh, I have to get up, right? My wife is still here. My daughters are here. Mm -hmm. You know, my dogs need me to feed them. So if I don't get up, who's doing it? And that's just kind of my mentality. But, uh, you know, I draw a lot of strength from, you know, guys that have had to persevere through trials and tribulations. Yeah. But it's just a mentality and sports again, taught it to me that you have no choice. You got to get your ass up. And, yeah. you know, I believe, you know, like when I get up every morning at five to work out. Yeah. I mean, there's days where it's the last thing I want to do, but I remember one of those guys just saying, one of the military guys saying that when your mind tells you, you know, don't do it. That's exactly when you get out of bed and do it. And yep. I think there's a lot of truth and validity to that. Yeah, totally, man. Yeah. That one thing you were saying about the TV cameras, that reminds me, there's like a verse in the Bible where it's like, when you do a good deed, like don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, you know? kind of yeah. check your motivations yeah um, you know, i i i i just believe in trying to be a good person man hold the door if you got to wait an extra 30 seconds for the old lady going into the barnes and noble bookstore <laughs> wait 30 seconds and hold the door for her and 
you know, puts a yeah. smile on your face. You did the right thing and she'll give you an old thank you. And you know, the world yeah. is a better place. For sure. And you, I know you went to Catholic school, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm a typical Catholic, uh, but I, I went to eight years of grade school, four years of high school. Uh, the obvious choice probably would have been the university in Notre Dame instead of Penn state. Uh, but, um, yeah, I went to Catholic school uh, my entire life. I had a great time. My best memories come from grade school, high school, uh, you know, especially high school because all the shenanigans that go on and oh, yeah. you know, how you Getting don't chase around by nuns and, and stuff. On. Yeah. And it's funny because <laughs> my aunt, uh, my dad's sister, she worked for the Diocese of Cleveland uh, forever. So she was wish working with bishops and cardinals and nuns and priests because she was in charge of uh, health and welfare, their pensions. So she had the important job. So it was always the biggest joke uh, when somebody would die in the family and people would show up. It would be a line of, you know, Catholic dignitaries showing up. There'd be a thousand <laughs> priests, a bishop. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, oh, man, like I'm going to get struck by lightning for all the bad stuff I've done. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But 12 years of Catholic school. Nice, man. Well, um, you mentioned fitness and that was um, one of, something I wanted to ask you about, too. And like. Um, you're talking about earlier and talking about Dan at over at elk shape and, um, that dude's an animal. I've actually spent nine days chasing him around the mountains with the camera. So I've seen that firsthand and, uh, and then mountain ops. So I was, which they're a, a partner of mine. And like, um, I thought it was super cool when I got into Western hunting, how fitness was like a big part of it. Like the hunting culture I kind of come from, it's almost it's not a part of it. It's, you know, it's almost like, I don't want to say it's like cool, but it's, you just have a lot of good old boys with the beer guts and the smoking a it's, cig. It's and, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's the Harrisburg sportsman show. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, when I got into, it, it was really, I was, I already knew my life needed to change like in many ways, but fitness wise as well, I was pretty overweight and when my buddy invited me to Alaska, he's he's a former Navy Special Warfare guy. And by the way, I'm the same way. I always wished I had joined the military. But kind of in my military prime age, I was just a complete idiot. And they probably wouldn't have even taken me. Um, but what I was trying to say was I realized, like, I got to get in shape for this. Like, I'm going to be carrying a week's worth of camp and food on my back through the mountains, like, trying to keep up with this dude. So Western hunting was, like, a catalyst in my life. Like, it was the carrot, you know, like it's so much easier to get in shape when you have like a race to train for or a hunt or something like that. And I just thought it was really cool getting into Western hunting, how like fitness is like a, a part of the whole deal. And so, um, I don't know, is that, is that something that you kind of admire about it as well? Yeah. So I think what's interesting, as you said, right, I back home in Ohio, you know, there's, it's mostly leave your truck, walk to a blind, walk to a tree stand, yeah. uh, might do a deer drive maybe the younger kids do the drive and push the deer to the old timers who are sitting there <laughs> you know when you go to a trade show i mentioned harrisburg or cleveland had them uh back in the day you know yeah everybody would put on their best mossy oak camouflage and you know <laughs> they rip lung darts and you know drink <laughs> beer and you know there, there's a charm to that too right there's a charm yeah. to it too i guess right it makes them happy and they're doing what they love to do yeah uh but you're exactly right that when you come out West, you know, you have guys like, you know, Cameron Haynes right now. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got this whole hammer it and all that stuff or whatever his, his saying is. And it's just great because it's promoting a couple things that you, one, we'd all love to hunt. If, if we're listening to these podcasts or we're following or we're buying all these products, but two, it does feel better to come out of the shower and at least look at yourself and not feel like you got a dad bod. Yeah. You know, so you get the best of both worlds. And now there's just become this huge community, whether it's on the internet or, or just locally, you've got guys that are doing it. They're working out, they're shooting their bows, right? Yeah. They're just trying different stuff. Guys, guys that maybe never would have looked at supplementation mm -hmm. now look at mountain up and, you know, is it better to put that in you or put a 12 pack of Dr. Pepper in you? Right. right. Like, of course you're, you're going to go with the healthy stuff. So uh, and you know, better than I do, cause I've been on some of these hunts and again, I, the goal is to do a lot more, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, sometimes climbing up that mountain can kick your ass. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, so yeah. the better shape you are, um, it's just mental clarity. You do feel better. You start your day mm-hmm. uh, or whether you work in the afternoon, but it's just the discipline of the whole thing. And again, I think working out, um, there's just so many benefits to it. Right. You know, totally. I've got buddies that'll say, man, why you work out all the time? We're all going to die anyway. I'm like, eh, that's true. But the reality is just like, I, it's the discipline, just like you have to be disciplined when you go on a backcountry hunt for a mule deer or an elk or mm-hmm. a goat, right? You got to get the wind right. You got to be in shape. You can't be breathing heavy. You might, you know, you might have to go a mile that way before you get, go back a half mile that way. Like it's just all those things come up, but it's the challenge. Um, and I think a lot of people run sometimes from the challenge, but it just seems like this mountain hunting, kind of this out West hunting right now, um, it's awesome because it's promoting again hunting, but it's also promoting, you know, it's going to give you a better shot to live a longer prosperous totally. life. If you stay yeah. in shape. Yeah. So, I like, I like yeah. I like what, how Dan Staten puts it. And I try to, I think that's kind of one of my goals through the podcast and stuff is to, um, it is about hunting, but also it's about like leveraging and this again, this is something I'm taking kind of from Dan, but leveraging hunting as like a tool and as like a motivation to be a better just a better man you know like um there's so much in our society now and i think honestly intentionally um to get men to be comfortable being a little overweight and a little more effeminate maybe than they should be or you know okay with mediocrity and like there needs to be a push and i think I think in a lot of ways, the Western hunting space is leading that charge. Um, and I hope to kind of encourage guys in this way is, um, hunting could be your end, but really it's also just like a means. Like for me, like I said, it was a catalyst and hunting has now become like a huge part of my life and like my career, but that's not, that's not everybody, but still you can, you can have that one hunt a year or whatever it may be, even, or, or that couple weekends a year and still look at that and say, okay, that's kind of my motivation, but I'm going to get in shape and, and do all these things. And and it's going to have spillover benefits. It's going to make me a better dad. I'm going to have more energy. I'll probably sure. be more creative at work. Um, I'm going to live longer, you know, maybe it'll, uh, motivate me to not drink that 12 pack on Friday night. Cause I got to wake up and go hunt the next day, you know? So like, I think it could be a great tool to motivate guys to, um, just be healthier and happier and, and be men. You know, yeah, I, I think right now, especially in the society that we live in, it's kind of hard to turn the television on or, you know, the radio, whether it's serious or whatever. And there's such a there just to be seems to be such a push to for everybody to, as you said, maybe be a little more effeminate or just not so masculine. And again, yeah. I, I can't subscribe to that. Again, it's you do what you want to do. You know, if that floats your boat, that floats your boat. Again, I, I, I really don't care. But in terms of being strong, being somebody that can protect my wife and my kids, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I need to scrap, I need to scrap, right? You know, the guy that came in and put a gun in my head for 30 minutes, I mean, listen, if he didn't have a gun in his hand pointed at my head, I'm yeah. whooping his ass. <laughs> yeah. Right? For there sure. was a, he had the, you know, he had the, he had the tool that kind of kept me back, but I was able to get out of that situation eventually. But, you know, I think it's okay to be strong. I think it's okay to have biceps or back. I think it's okay to be able to walk, you know, 10 miles a day or run 50 miles a day or whatever mm-hmm. some of these guys are doing. But I think it's okay to, to enjoy guns and bow hunting. I think it's For okay sure. to butch. I think it's okay to get blood on your hands. I think it's okay to be a guy and, and, and look at women, right? The same way that women, you know, work out is the same reason guys work out. Everybody does it to look good and feel better. So um, again, you know, and it's even great because there's a lot of women that are getting their place in the hunting world right now, Yeah, you know, for sure. they're out there and they're attractive and they're, they're out there doing what they love to do. Right. And, you know, um, I love it. So again, I just like this whole, I'm okay, man. If, and if you don't like me because I'm, masculine then so be it i guess yeah. but i don't know any other way nor do i want to know any other yeah. way I can and tell you can... this, if my kids get married if they bring in a softy i'm voicing my displeasure yeah. like i need somebody to protect my daughters 
period. Yeah. yeah. And you're a perfect example of, you know, you can be masculine and not be a jerk and be a nice guy. And sure. in fact, the warrior ethos is about protecting the weak and and being that good person. Um, yeah. Morality is a huge part of that, and discipline plays into morality. And um, and you can't protect the weak if you are the weak. So right. yeah. um, that and that's why I just hate this whole push in our society to like just pacify and and um, like it's okay to have your dad bod and whatever. And it's like okay, no, no um, we got We got actually gotta, not. <laughs> yeah, we got to stand up against that, man. Um, so how do you, what's, what's your fitness look like these days? What do you, what's, what do you kind of do? So I do, uh, it's funny cause the body is pretty beat up from football. I'm sure. Right. So, you know, the knees, it's funny. I have a, my youngest daughter is 16. She turned 17 in the end of January. Uh, well, she's really good at volleyball herself and I'm just trying to teach her the discipline side of things. But for me personally, uh, uh, you know, I get up and she gets up with me 90% of the time, other than like today when she was like, dad, I set my alarm clocks, but they both didn't go off. But I'm like, oh, <laughs> must have been a power outage, I guess. But uh, I get up every morning at five o'clock, as I said, it's just because it's not that I want to, it's just because I have to. Yeah, I, I feel better. I, I do actually like sipping on a cup of coffee and seeing, you know, what few cars are out on the road guys that are probably heading over to a warehouse or working a train station. I love seeing that. It, it makes me happy. Uh, but my workouts consist of not as heavy weights anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll break my, my, my body parts down, shoulders, arms, back, legs, abs. Uh, and I try to walk at least one mile every day. Right. I don't know. I, and there's times I'll walk three miles, I'll walk six miles, yeah. but it's just kind of the discipline of trying to get one mile of walking in every single day. Yeah. Um, so that I can kind of hit that 10,000 steps uh, that I know for a fact that it's going to help me hit my 10,000 steps every day. Uh, but the weights just aren't as heavy. I'm still pretty strong. Uh, and I try to push myself um, so that I have a good sweat. Uh, you know, there's, I'll do some kettlebell swings and I've got, you know, the mallets and you, you name it, I got it. Battle ropes. I've got a sled right over here <laughs> inside here that I push and pull. That's, you know, the way yeah, that's good in the parking lot. I do a lot over, uh, the ATG knees over toes guys. Oh yeah. Just try to bulletproof my knees. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, it all helps because I do notice the difference where, you know, if I am climbing, uh, or if I'm in the sand hills here in Nebraska at my buddy's place, I mean, you know, walking up in elevation, there's probably about 32, 3,300, but you know, you get into some of these canyons there along the dismal river and you're walking in deep sand, you know, it's a Ooh. lot of sand. Yeah. Like, you know, it, your legs will burn. So, For uh, sure. I don't know. It just feels better to be in shape. And again, I don't worry so much about like, oh, he's not lifting as much as he used to. There was yeah. a point where, you know, in the combine, I did 225, 23 times. And I thought that was pretty good for me. And nice. Yeah. Now, you know, I, I might top out at, you know, shoulder press 65 pounds or whatever, but I get to, I get the burn in and yeah, I keep my body fat down and I eat really healthy. Uh, nice. you know, and I, I have the days obviously where you'll splurge like everybody, but sure. Uh, I try to remain pretty disciplined and, uh, and that's been my entire life. Yeah, man. Well, that's great, dude. Um, all right. Well, I know you said you want to kill a big elk with your bow and you want to kill a sheep at some point, any other, um, like, even if it's just like, like this season or this off season or this next hunting season, like kind of goals you're, you're shooting after. Well, the big one for me right now, the, 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 the nearest one is just, uh, it's for sure trapping. I'd like to set out my, my trap line and, you know, that's this whole that, other game, man. That's a whole other thing. It is. I've, I've trapped a few things, beaver and coyotes and just never a bobcat. I'm, you know, I don't know. You can actually see him over my shoulder here. I'm making these bobcat, uh, oh, nice. pots to put conibear, uh, two twenties in. And, uh, okay. I just, it's that's the good one uh that's the short one uh then in the fall i got into this hole you can see some of my woodwork and stuff behind me so i i work here on laundry stuff i got my hunting stuff in here i got a little wood shop back there this place gives me my little that's awesome my, my slice of heaven away from it that's like this room right here i got all my hunting stuff camping stuff guns yeah studio it just makes you happy um, yeah so i got into making turkey calls um, oh that's cool it's kind of funny i was back in ohio and there's this place called woodcraft 
And this, uh, I was like, ah, I've seen this store before. Let me walk in here. And there was an old timer, a World War II veteran, and he had more hair growing out of his ears, <laughs> like you comb it. And he asked me if I've ever worked on a lathe before. I said, I've never done it. You know, I'm I'm pretty handy, right? You know, uh, I've done some smaller wood projects, but never had tools like this. And that guy took me back there uh, into the little shop, put a two two inch by two inch square, and had me whittle it into basically a chess piece mm. um, on the lathe. And so anyway, uh, from there, I now have a lathe and band saws and planer boards and stuff, but I got into making turkey calls. That's cool. Um, and um, actually, yeah. this was just a, I'm going to use this on a decoy, but this was this past, um, this was, this was, that was Is this that past a Miriam's spring. turkey? Yeah, some Miriam, right. So, uh, but that was from this past spring uh, off a piece of black walnut. I took off my buddy's ranch, tried it oh, out, awesome, man. It, and I called it with it. So that's really uh, cool. It's that kind of thing that that makes me happy in terms of the big game. Again, I'll wait till I draw some of these tags. Uh, you know, um, I was out uh, whitetail mule deer hunting in the sand hills a few weeks ago. It was 65 degrees, it was t shirt weather, made oh, for tough hunting. <laughs> um, but, um, again, you sit up during the sand hills and you look for miles and miles and, you know, I'm laughing cause I'm like, this is my buddy's ranch. Like as far as you could see, and some is his ranch still. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's second to the Sahara desert, I believe in sand mass and it's here in Nebraska. <laughs> no way. You know? Yeah. It's just kind of crazy, but it's all rolling grass, prairie grass. And there's a pretty good deer hunting out there. Yeah. So on the. You know, it's one of the few places where you could shoot whitetail or mule deer. And mm -hmm. because he, the, the, the ranch is actually uh, on the Dismal River, uh, you know, you got a bunch of cedars, deep valleys, uh, you know, whitetail, uh, you know, obviously maybe up into the 160, 170 range. Nice. Out here, you know, not a lot of nutrition that you would, you know, equate with big whitetail deer, but the mule deer, um, I think the biggest mule deer on the ranch that's been shot is 196. Oh, wow. Uh, which tells you, I'm sure there's some 200s out there, but yeah. far and few between in the sand sure. hills. But typically, um, you know, I think you'll look at, you know, 160, 170, some 180s pretty consistent out there. So it's yeah. really good. I mean, it's 180s big. Boone and Crockett. So, right. Yeah. And that's that's, a, so that's a big deer. They're there. So That's it's just cool. kind of fun. So I, I enjoy, I just enjoy studying it. I mean, the yeah. Mule Deer Foundation, I belong to that place too, right? And, you know, just like, I love it. So have you ever been out to the Mule Deer Foundation Hunt Expo in Salt Lake City? No. So I think that's actually, it's funny you said that. I, on a calendar, um, I marked all that stuff down. So I'm going to do a few more trips this year. I am going to hit the Safari Club International. I'll hit there. Uh, I belong to the uh, backcountry. Um, um hunters uh, and anglers hunters and anglers club uh you know they do a lot of stuff in the bozeman area which is one of yeah. the areas my wife and i are looking and you know it's funny like how bozeman came up is my wife needs a little bit of yuppie you and, can get that you know, in bozeman and you can get that in bozeman <laughs> but then you also have yes a lot of these places that you know stuff i wear like stone glacier or Renella mm -hmm. and those guys i believe are out there so um there's yeah, Montana's big, great, man. It's great. So yeah. that's why I'm like, all right, we'll give you, you know, you can go do your yoga and have a glass of wine and I can go drink IPAs and Heck meet yeah. some honey guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, um, I always go to the Salt Lake City, the Expo, the Mule Deer Foundation Expo. So um, I'll, I'll, sh I'll give you my number when we get off here. And if you end up yep. coming out, we should link up. Yep. That'd but, be great. Um, yeah, man, it's great talking to you. It's so cool to hear again how like – um, you had this awesome football career, but how hunting has kind of like, you know, helped you transition and like kind of been this new thing. So uh, that's awesome, man. And uh, yeah, thanks for following my page and uh, and yeah, linking man. up and give me some time, man. It's been really cool talking to you. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll get together here soon. But appreciate it. And like I said, I just um, I think just to be able to. As I start to make this trek even further west from where I am in Nebraska over the next year, that you know, I to meet up at a show, have a beer, uh, just keep seeing what you guys do. That's what gets me out of bed every day because I know, you know, I still got some good years of 
Oh yeah. Around. So hundred uh, percent. Then after that, it'll just be more listening to the stories or telling stories. But, uh, <laughs> or I can just like wheel you out in a wheelchair and take you with yeah, me somewhere. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Well, thanks again, man. This has been cool. All right, brother. Have a good All day. Right, talk to you soon. Bye.